Hello Linux lovers, my name's Wimpy, welcome to my world. As uh, I discussed on last night's stream, I'm uh, going to make a start or a restart, a reboot on uh, a project uh, that I, I created last year. So this is um, so-called the Ubuntu uh, Retro Remix and the idea is to create an operating system for the Raspberry Pi that's a simple um, way to run a retro game console emulation on the Raspberry Pi. So that's what the project's about. And I made some progress with it. And then I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to keep going with it. But now I've decided, yes, uh, I'm going to have a go, but I'm going to set some very clear sort of guidelines in place about um, how I'm going to go about this. I've noticed that I've changed a setting in here, which is spamming spamming me so i'm just going to disable that uh, we'll just take a quick look in the usual places that's good okay right then so um this kind of comes off the back of uh last week when i was making the ubuntu mate 2110 images for the raspberry pi so this is going to be an extension well, a sort of building on what i learned doing that uh, so some of this is going to look a bit familiar. Good morning, Linux Paul. Welcome back. Hello, King Egypt. How are you doing? Welcome back. Do you have yourself a uh, fresh brew for the for this morning? Um, King Egypt, was it a late night for me? It was about half one, I think, when I finished last night's stream. I really wanted to get that one done, though. Um, lots of good fixes there. And in fact, the, the remaining bug that we were struggling with last night uh we found a solution for or danny's found a uh, a solution for so we can fix that later as well good morning uh is that Vasily? is that uh is that the name there it's, it's always difficult to know how to pronounce these welcome welcome to the stream thanks for stopping by so um let's just explain what i'm going to be uh striving for here i um <laughs> excellent glad i got that right so um yeah, so I'll explain about the ad breaks as well. So that is something new that I'm doing here. It's very deliberate at the front of the streams. So I've been doing some research and the research I've done tells me that if I automatically run the... Um, why are the pre-rolls only off for nine minutes though? Oh man, it was better last night. I'm What I'm experimenting with is manually running pre-rolls at the start of the stream in order to extend the period that nobody sees any ads whatsoever. So that's why you're seeing them up at the front. And the idea is then that people that join the stream uh, don't see uh, ads as they as they try and join for the first time. That's the what we're striving for. Although I can see in the ad manager that, oh no, this is good. Pre-rolls pre are off and it's telling me that the next ad is 48 minutes away. So this is kind of working by design. The idea is to run a couple up front. It's not for monetization. It's just to push the ads out as far as possible, uh, for as long as possible. That's the goal. So yeah, you'll get, there'll be two at the front of the stream. One as I go live, it, uh, one automatically gets triggered. Um, I'm using Atom. Uh, which is a new sort of automation bit of software to integrate with Twitch and OBS and other stuff. So it automatically fires one as the stream comes up. And then I've got Twitch scheduled to then run one within the first 60 seconds. And those two then stack on top of one another to then create, in this case, a 50 minute ad free window. And then hopefully from that point onwards, I can minimize the ads to only run at um as, as 30 seconds um 30 second ads or hopefully in some cases less than 30 seconds uh every 50 minutes so i'm trying to figure out because i'm not i'm not trying to monetize this channel with adverts and not not that i can i have two you know we're a small channel you don't make money with adverts on twitch at all so i'm just trying to um make it as unobtrusive as possible Maybe last night's configuration was a bit more effective, so I might have to tinker with things over time. Anyway, that's that's what all that's about. Hopefully that's not too bad. And thank you, Mac, for the sub. 
um, yeah, that's one way you can control that for yourself is subscribing. I'm not advocating that. that that's lovely that you do that. And it's good that you get no adverts if you do that. Um, but I'm trying to do my best for those people that don't sub as well. Um, so who have we got here? <laughs> hey, Takoff, how you doing? Welcome back. Um, so Linux Paul, um, how long till Twitch catch up? Well, yeah, I, I do wonder about that. I do feel like this stacking pre-rolls isn't what <laughs> Twitch, especially like when you're in the, the first few seconds of a stream and there's probably no one or maybe one or two people and possibly the only people that are watching at that point are subscribers anyway, because they're like the people that are caught to, uh, your community so we'll see but we're, we're trying to do the best with the tools that we've got available kb78 gifted a tier one sub to linux paul m this is their first gift sub in the channel well thanks very much mike that's really good um so uh morning esme welcome back how are you uh so your background music uh, right, okay, we'll enjoy your Animal Crossing. Um, I've got some chiptune music on here as well. Oh, get you, look, triggering all of the things. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so, the Retro Remix. So, those of you that were here, was it last Monday, when I unboxed all of that stuff, that Raspberry Pi stuff, which is sat next to me, will have seen I've got a bunch of a uh, widely known um, retro styled cases that emulate that look like uh, classic consoles you know the NES, the SNES, the Master System, PlayStation and so on and some of those have wiring in them to do extra things like um, power switches and reset switches and stuff like that and I think in some cases fans so my idea is to build a minimal Ubuntu OS which has uh, an emulator packed inside it and generate an image that's specific to that case and emulating games that you, you know would be for the NES or the SNES or whatever. So it's a little bit idiosyncratic and you know obviously the easy thing to do would be go and download RetroPie or Batocera or something and just use that. Um, and I, I did consider doing that again this time round but what I've decided to do is reboot the Retro Remix and see if I can learn. So I want to learn some stuff in the process basically but I don't want these full-blooded solutions i don't want loads of stuff i want them to be quite discreet so with that in mind let's head over to the in fact let me use the buttons down here because this is all being reprogrammed now so with that in mind um this is the project Ugh. um the retro remix i think i'm going to have to restyle this logo a little bit um for reasons which we'll, we'll get to probably later in the week um, and I did videos on this when I was streaming on YouTube last year and you can see here examples of the cases that I was you know considering targeting and this works a lot like the image builder for Ubuntu Mate what the way it works is it's a shell script that you run and it will build you an image file that you stick on an SD card and the idea is eventually I'll host the various you know images for the different models on a website somewhere um, but this is a way to iterate on that and you know it looks like I started with um, 2004 and things are moving on <laughs> hello hello Jeff good morning how you doing so I'm going to be uplifting this and I've decided to scope things down a little bit as well so um, I'm just catching up on the on the thing here. So Linux Paul says I installed Windows 11 yesterday. It took me ages to install that, set it up, and then install Ubuntu Mate in dual boot. And uh, yes, very nice, good good job. Upshot is that yes, Windows 11 is working well uh, on my not officially supported first gen Ryzen. Excellent, good for you. So. Um, uh, what I've decided to do is this. When I was originally doing this, I was experimenting with RetroArch. 
And one of the reasons the icon is this colour is because of a theme inside retro arch was coloured like that and I thought that's what I was going to use. And it says here to do pretty much everything. Yeah, that's kind of where we are. But I think in that last video I did, I made some leaps and bounds in that I got all the hardware acceleration stuff going, so that was good. Um, and this is what I've decided to build it on top of. So there is a lib retro front end called Ludo. Um, and I did include this as like another option inside uh, the retro remix when I was doing it a year ago. But I've decided that I'm only going to use this. So I'm only going to use Ludo. I'm not going to bother with RetroArch. And Ludo has an interesting uh, feature in that they do make Ludo OS, which is sort of based on the Open Elec or Libra Elec sort of base system with this emulator baked in. And it can integrate with Conman, which is a network manager to configure Wi-Fi and things of that nature and uh, Samba for copying ROMs on and off of the device. Um, and I thought what I'd have a go at is see, yes, the retro remix is back. I'm, I'm doing it uh, starting now. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to build around Ludo. We're going to try and run it in Ludo OS mode as a single purpose uh, front end. It's the only front end that will run on the system and then get the network manager capability working and things like Samba for copying things to and from the um, device, the ROMs and what have you. Um, and then the other thing that I want to look at, what was the other thing I want to look at? Oh yeah, is that each of these devices that I'm making have, I have a specific controller in mind that sort of matches the case. So I've actually got some reproduction um, uh, Mega Drive controllers, uh, which are officially licensed. So they look and feel just like the originals. And so I want those to go work in tandem with the Mega Drive case. Uh, pre-roll, uh, what's this? Hang on a second. Pre-roll ads are on. Run an ad break to disable them. What's that telling me? Well, this is telling me that there's going to be an ad running in 38 minutes, I think. If anyone sees ads, please let me know. I'm just trying, I'm still researching how to refine and tune this whole ad running nonsense. So, um, you know, just let me know if you if you've seen them yet and uh, when 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 they do get triggered I'm trying to minimize it and the other thing we're doing as well I'll just click some buttons over here let's just copy that and click this we're uh, we're doing this fun stuff as well there we go start there we go so, um, so let's have a look here. Lips <laughs> Paul says, I don't understand why publishers don't sell official ROMs of retro games for emulation. Yeah. I mean, when Nintendo do for their devices, and then of course you've got the various minis that have come out over, over the years. Um, and there's, Ant, is it Ant Arcade? Is that the thing? Where uh, that's a collection of officially licensed retro games. So, um, and Cody goes on to say, I use Stream Link Twitch GUI. So instead of ads in the stream, in my MPV window pauses until the ads are done. Oh, that's clever. What's uh, what's that then? Can you put some links to what that is on the on the thing? So the idea is is that um, and some of these cases um, also have specific wiring and capabilities inside them. Uh, mostly it's like power buttons and things of that nature. I don't think there's anything until I until you get to the handheld ones. There's nothing too exotic. So there's a, the handheld ones have got their own screens and obviously. A uh, bit more interesting keyboards and I've got a monster joystick as well which has obviously got a whole wiring loom hooked up to the GPIOs but when I get to those ones 
I want to figure out how to enable those in Ubuntu and then package that configuration in some way so that you can create, you know, uh, uh, an Ubuntu Retro Remix for that device that's just set up and ready to go. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to be using and I know that I did lose a little bit of work on this project, but not a huge amount due to a um, drive failure about a year ago. But I, I think the sum total of what I lost was the SVGs and the um, original um, GIMP image um, sources for the logo. <laughs> And I've decided I'm going to use the same idea, but I've decided I'm going to redo the logo because um, you probably realise I'm going through a bit of a, uh, a bit of a fan of hot pink at the moment. And rather conveniently, the Ludo logo is uh, a nice pink colour. So I think we'll build the logo around this colour to colour match. Um, I want to. So Ludo itself is quite minimal. Um, they've got very... Um, clear goals for the project and so I'm feeding off of their sort of goals and objectives in how I'm going to create the retro remix I'm going to create retro remix in accordance with the sort of the goals of Ludo to keep it minimal and not blow it out with a, a bunch of unnecessary stuff but I do want to make a device that I can plug in and it connect to the network and Bluetooth will work for Bluetooth controllers and just, you know, it just functions. So that's the that's the idea. The project's here. So if I head over to uh, Visual Studio Code, I've got that opened up here. And, um, you know, I was obviously basing this on 2004 at the time. And it looks like from the readme, I decided to only publish images that were arm hf and i can't remember why i decided to do that i'm i'm thinking i'll probably support both now um some of these devices you know what i'm trying to do is use the most appropriate raspberry pi for the device as well so some of these cases will support like the raspberry pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 2 is more than capable of being an emulator for NES games, for example. I can't remember which um, I've got in the various cases. So that's something I'll rediscover as we get into this. And these were the initial set of devices that I'd obviously got in mind. So just a, a flat bare Raspberry Pi. Then the Mega Pi version, uh, which is the um, Mega Drive version, the NES Pi. Now, actually, when we went through the cases, I think I've got four different editions of the NES Pi case, so we can tweak that accordingly. And a Super Pi, which is the Super Nintendo case. And I think I have two versions of that. I have the European and the Japanese uh, version, but the, the function of the case is the same, regardless of the sort of regional styling that it has. So... Cody asks, is this going to be strictly for emulators, like there won't be a Cody mode? Correct. Uh, this is going to be generate an image specifically for uh, a case, a case style and uh, controllers that are appropriate for that emulator, for that uh, retro console. <clears throat> so quite niche emulators only i'm not getting into the cody thing there's other people already making cody front ends if you need that then go and get that from somebody that's you know super laser focused on that but this is going to be mega minimal um emulation uh console os that's the that's the purpose so uh linux paul says so is ludo a better front end than retro arch well, <laughs> that's difficult to answer because better for who? Um, in my opinion, for this project, it's the right fit because it's um, it's a very usable, minimal, clean user interface. And when I was using RetroArch, there is a ton of options in there, which is great if you want all of that configurability. But I don't. I just want to be able to play some games. 
So, um, and also Ludo is built by a lot of the same people that work on RetroArch, you know, uh, and Lib, uh, Lib Retro. It's all part of that same sort of ecosystem. But I like the goals and objectives that the Ludo team have set out and it's very pretty and also it's very, very fast. Um, and so it worked extremely well and it was over a year ago I last played with it on the Pi and once I'd got all the hardware acceleration hooked up, it was working really well. And I saw from the release notes in the latest versions of Ludo, you have to enable the full KMS driver on the Raspberry Pi now which tells me that that performance is going to have improved um, a little bit more as well. And by doing that and making it retro console specific, I know that I'm not gonna run into issues with using the full KMS driver and having difficulties loading camera modules because I don't care about camera modules in this case. I just care about having good performance for uh, retro emulation. The other thing I like about Ludo is they've decided what uh, emulation cores are available and they have picked a single emulation core for each um, uh, console that you want to emulate. You don't get to choose one of the many that exist for the NES. They have picked the best one that they, they recommend and that's what you get and I like that because it means I don't have to be an expert in tuning and picking uh, the emulation core. They've already done that for me. So, you know, there's there's a there's a bunch of reasons why I like it. Um, they figured out stuff that I don't need to get involved in. It's implemented in Go. I think I'm right in saying it's implemented in Go. Um, and it uses SDL now. So the, the, the issue I had with it in the past is controllers were a bit finicky to set up. And I'm hoping that's going to be a bit easier now. So... Is it better? I think it's better for what I'm setting out to achieve and also it's a bit different, you know, loads of people are using RetroArch with different skins in various projects. Uh, Ludo isn't widely used, I thought it would be a bit more interesting to work with it and I anticipate I'm going to need to tweak a couple of things. I suspect that when we get into the Ludo OS integration side of stuff, some of the expected paths are going to be different on Ubuntu to uh, the Libre Elec base and I may need to you know just do a little bit of um, code um, tweaking it, uh, that I'll send upstream in order to make it function nicely so that's the idea so um, uh, oh the link was censored oh, okay that's unfortunate Cody can you stick it in the, the discord so I can uh, I can take a look at that later. It sounds interesting. Um, so hopefully that's on the question. Yes, it's strictly emulators and do I think it's better than RetroArch for this purposes? Yeah. Yeah, and less resource intensive, which, you know, when you're targeting some of these devices are gonna be, um, what are they called? Um, <laughs> I've forgotten, the Pi Zero. Some of them are uh, based around the Pi Zero, so yeah. Laka, that's right, Cody. So the one that I'm familiar with is Laka, which uses um, Ludo and then Ludo OS itself. Yeah, yeah, so it's the clean interface is the big, big win, I think. And um, yeah, I've looked at Batasera and uh, a couple of the others and they're very comprehensive. And if the constraints that I'm setting out here mean that I fail, at doing this then that's fine I, uh, I'm prepared to fail on those terms and then I'll go and you know look at something else uh, as a means to bring these things up and actually in, you know turn them into usable playable devices so you need a sound effect for the what's this you need a sound effect for go the way Chris Lass does in Rust uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm, I'll have to. I'll have to look that up because um, I. Uh, yeah, we can put all of that in as you. Yeah, as you will have seen, I've started uh, sort of building in some redemptions and channel point stuff, and yeah, we're just we're we're going to be doing more of that as well. So um, if we look at this, this is going to look almost identical in places to 
uh, the script that I showed uh, the other day that builds the Ubuntu Martin, which is for the Raspberry Pi. So we're using the same technique of um, using a container, a systemd uh, container, to run each of the steps. And um, these are the tools that we need. This is, and also in the same way, we start with a base image, the server, pre-installed server image for the Pi of Ubuntu to give us like um, a starting platform to build up on. Um, so we mount that, extract all of its contents and, th and then uh, operate on it inside a container to add um, the software that we want. So I think one of the things I'm gonna start by doing is actually seeing what I can merge from my current uh, version of the Ubuntu Mate build script into this um, in order to um, sort of bring this up to uh, that current level um, because I fixed and improved some stuff just recently um, and that will get us this and then we get to the install piece here and we oh, we can axe some things out because lib um, not libretro but um, retroarch is kind of assumed to be the default um, experience in this at the moment. So I'm going to rip all of that out and just leave it with um, Ludo. Um, and I can see here, for example, this is very much hard coded around ARM HF at the moment. I'm going to have to think about this I wonder if there's any significant improvement in performance. I, th I think we'll, we'll build both and then we can test uh, performance on this in the future. Hello Dust, how are you doing? Did you get any rest over the weekend or were you super busy <laughs> sorting out um, Atom? Thank you by the way, it's been working brilliantly here. Um, I used Atom this morning to automatically run my pre-roll. <laughs> so finally implemented my good idea. We're, we're doing some research on how far we can push ads out and all the rest of it. Um, so what's this? What's this being discussed? Um, okay, so that's good, Cody. So yeah, uh, using Ludo then you'll get some fun out of this. Um, and Cody goes on to say, will this have flashy intro vi video? Um, probably not. <laughs> um, I mean, part of the reason for doing the, the these like development projects out in the open like this is, Cody, if you want to make a Plymouth splash screen uh, that makes the startup sequence look um, pretty, then by all means, uh, yes, we'd love one of those. Um, so yeah, um, you know, that's where P people can find their their way to contribute so if that's something you want to work on we'll we'll, we'll we can do that um so um dust says i got like a few hours last night up until oh you were playing forza oh man so as you know linux user but um i'm thinking i might have a go on that on what's the xbox game get xbox game pass i think i can play it uh through the streaming library uh, I really want to have a go at that. Um, yeah, so uh, Atom's going well. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all, all being good, all being good. Um, so yeah. Uh, and yeah, I've I've done a whole bunch of stuff. I'll probably do one of the streams this week. I'll probably do a little look at like how I've changed my automation, not just via Atom, but as a result of Atom, I've decided to like try and automate everything um, so I've got a whole bunch of bring up that happens automatically now at the push of a button on the stream deck uh, which I'm very happy with because I stream from two different locations with different kit and it, it adapts my configs based on where I am automatically which is a massive time saver so <laughs> Dust is the developer behind Atom which is this tool I'm using now for the stream automation it's brilliant but he's 
doing two jobs he's got a day job and and atom i think it's keeping him busy i know i know how that goes as well so we'll we'll x this out and just pair this down to um uh, ludo and then here this is where i'm going to have to remember what i did here but unlike the ubuntu mate images these lib re uh, lib retro these retro uh, remix images use cloud in it and the idea is is that instead of going through that big long oem setup process of typing in username and password that this provisions uh, an account automatically on first boot and does the whole resize the file system uh, and a bunch of other things to actually mean that the first time you power the device on it self configures so that's the uh, that's the objective there we'll see how we go on um, this is retro arch specific so we can throw that away I think as we can all of these things so this was me poking inside the retro arch config to change the behavior this was the theme that was the inspiration for the logo colors so we'll chuck all of that away i'm thinking we'll go with um something sort of to that matches the ludo look and feel in terms of the um, and we're not going to see much gtk we're basically going to see it are we going to see it at all I'll have to have a think about that. We should be able to take it all the way through automatically. Um, so all of that can probably go as well. And that. This we can disable these overrides for the moment. Um, and this we'll need, but we'll get rid of this one. And just keep the one for Ludo. And this is the flag that tells Ludo to operate in its Ludo OS mode, which I think is going to require a little bit of patching um, to make, make it happy with Ubuntu. And this here is going to have to change because this is very much um, a configuration set up to work with Ubuntu, an Ubuntu 2004 image. And I think I'm going to build these on top of 2110 because then I can pivot those to 2204 images in the in the future um, so uh, um, let's have a look here <laughs> young days are gone indeed <laughs> I'm so old I can't remember how old I am it's my birthday next week and I, I, I I generally can't, without doing the sums in my head, I genuinely can't remember which one it is. <laughs> what year is it? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, uh, let's have a look then. So, um, so Takoff says, however, I have questions security wise. Okay. So if it's self configured, it's running everything as the Ubuntu user, or is it a restricted user with password setup? Um, I think by default, it creates an account called Ubuntu, the way the cloud in it works. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think this is how it works. I think when you use cloud in it on insert name of distro, the default user is the name of the distro. And I think the password is set to be the same so in this case it would be ubuntu ubuntu but the first time you log in it automatically prompts you to change the password i think is how it works uh but we will we will have to find out so i'm not sure if i'm wedded to cloud in it yet um i may you know do the whole oem setup thing like the, the way that the ubuntu mate images work so the first time you turn it on you go through a configuration process you know connect it to your wi-fi blah 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 but i would like to not do that again using cloud init is a means to learn something new and i'm interested in in doing that so, uh, but yes, the idea is it doesn't run in the root context. It runs in a non-privileged user account by default. 
Right then. Um, and then it like, says, at some point, you stop caring. About, yeah, exactly. I don't even care. It's my birthday. I mean, the, the birthdays just become irrelevant. Um, yeah. Uh, right then. So that's that will just need changing up. So what else do we have here? This cleanup step will just need adapting slightly. That's probably fine as it is. And the image creation stuff is probably going to be exactly what we had before. And I was, <laughs> I had this disabled while iterating, but I think I'll keep that given that I have to move these images around. It'll help shunt things about the place. Um, creating the hashes is fine. So this bit here will need to change. So uh, so there's a quite a few differences there. Oh, what's this? Image out. Okay, that's fine. Quality alpha one. Yeah. Okay. Right then. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by seeing if th this is at all possible. I'm going to try and meld the Ubuntu Mate build image with the Retro Remix image creation script to see what I can just merge in in order to, um, you know, get stuff going. Uh, so we want development... That's the script, and we want to merge that with <coughs> this one. Oop, that's opened a bit Larry Large. Let's see if we can uh, just resize that. Oh, goodness. Stop clamping. So there's enough similarities that I think we can merge stuff over. So, um, the usage stuff is not important. Okay, so the temporary directories. Oh, okay, so I did improve on that a little bit. Let's just have a look down the bottom here. Because I've done all of this stuff. Whereas here, do I just operate on... Okay. So on when I build the Ubuntu Mate images, I create different directories for the different stages of the build process. But it looks like here, I um, I don't actually do that. I have a single place that they build. So we just have the boot and root uh, references here. So that's fine, I think. Um, And I've removed the signing piece from there, which is fair enough. Um, hmm. What else have we got here that we need to account for? So these are different because of the difference between image directory and temp directory so that would actually help s some noise if I made those the same maybe okay okay that's the cloudy nip files which we removed from Ubuntu Mate but we need to keep those for um, this currently because we're going to use cloudy nip so uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, and bus pass milestones indeed. Yeah, not quite that old just yet. Um, okay. I wonder if we're going to need to do this at some point. So that we're definitely going to need to work with. Um, this is all the OEM stuff. 
So at the moment, I'm not seeing huge much, huge amount that needs merging in so much as I think this configuration stuff we should, but I'll copy that in by hand rather than try and diff it in here. Um, so that may need work to extract. So we're actually not going to be using any snaps in the Ubuntu Retro Remix. So this probably needs to be um, made a bit more robust in order to actually go and clear out all of the snaps. So the idea is that we'll just go and yank all of the preceded snaps out of the server image so that there's no snaps on the um on the retro arch image so actually i'm not sure i want to copy anything over by hand oh, sorry through this merge i think i want to do it all by hand this i think i'll need to make sure we've got the, oh yeah and we need to do this because we're going to be basing on 2110 there's a new kernel package for all of the Raspberry Pi extras so we'll need to make sure we get that in okay um, is that the same with just different variables yes Oh, pardon me. Right, okay. So I'm not going to meld any of this. What we'll do is we'll, we'll bring this up by hand. Uh, we'll bring that up. Like so. So this is the Ubuntu Mate build image. And what I'll do is I'm just going to do this and make sure that we've... Oh, actually, no, I can't do that. So let's go to the sync and just make sure that's operating in the same fashion. Uh, I don't even see, don't even see that function in here. So why is that? So that's probably worth comparing. That apt prepare will be in this apt step here. So that will be the same. Um, so let's just look at that and just see what we're not doing the same. So what have we got here? That's all fine. So we're leaving Cloudy Knit in uh, this one. Okay. Okay. So that appears to be the only difference is that Cloudy Knit is left intact in the Retro Remix, which is fine. Um, but we probably need to do some of this stuff here. So. That's, this technique has definitely changed. So I'm going to need to I'm going to need to tidy up all of this stuff. Um, all of this, I wrote a whole new mechanism for handling the kernel upgrades inside the image building process. <laughs> so the reason I'm just yanking all of the snaps out is that if at any point in the future I choose to use snaps, I can seed my own. But uh, because we're basing off the server image, that will have a snap of Lex D um, automatically seeded and we clearly don't want that on you know our retro console thingy so I'm just gonna hoover that all that stuff up and uh, and remove it so this kernel stuff we're definitely gonna need to take care of and where did I do that so this here we can we can totally borrow all of this right we can do all of that and we can put that in our um, snap stage 
There we go. So that is now a complete removal of all of the snaps because this will have this changed in 2010 versus 2004. So that needs um, that needs improving. So this here, install the remix packages. We're not going to be doing that, and we're not going to be doing that either. Uh, but we will be installing Conman. And then we need to install the newer version of Ludo. So we'll go and find out what that is in just a moment. Um, clean up all of this. And... So we're disabling the network and so we're disabling the network in cloud init and the reason we're doing this is because we want conman to be the user interface for all the, the wireless stuff. So Takov says, and I presume you will have diff branches for the different consoles. Um, no, I think what I'm going to do is um, have um, an argument that you pass to the script to tell it which console you're building an image for and that will include the requisite uh, device specific configurations for that target console as you build the image so then you'll be able to download an image and say well i want the one for this particular case you know <clears throat> we're just going to assume that all of this is fine because i it's been a while it's been over a year and i can't remember <laughs> all the ins and outs of what i was adding there this we can definitely get rid of this was specifically the joypad configuration for retro arch this was the config for retro arch as was that this was a theme for retro arch so we'll get rid of that we'll get rid of this update the icon cache well that won't change but that bit will so we'll get rid of that we'll get rid of this and for the moment we'll just comment all of this out we'll just go with the defaults um, we'll probably come back to this at some point um, all of that can be commented out um, then create a session for so that we need we don't want the retro arch one, but we do want Ludo. Uh, and then we've got, so I think here, the auto login session, we now change to Ludo. Like so, and that should do the right thing. Uh, that we definitely need to improve. So let's go and just grab the configuration piece out of out of this script. Um, so so no U-boot since 2010. So I think it's basically this bit of code. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll grab all of this. Um, copy all of that and drop that in instead of this. And that should be compatible the only thing we'll need to change is we will force the audio out over HDMI because I think that's a sensible default for what we're doing here and then this one here will change this because we know <clears throat> enable the full KMS graphics overlay as recommended by Ludo. So we'll just go and take a look at that because I, I just want to make doubly sure I'm not making up stories there. I'm pretty sure that if I go and look at this project on GitHub, I read something about the um, this is install <laughs> who's burning my stuff. <laughs> 
Um, right then. Does this say anything? This doesn't say anything about... Oh, here it is. On Raspbian, you need to enable the experimental OpenGL support full KMS. So that's what I was just... That's what I was just doing there. Which is what this does. So... In fact, I'm not sure that's the correct flag name anymore either. No, it must be, because I had that in the other thing. Um, so that's all fine. And then I've got this here to catch the 64-bit config. And we do that up here. So we'll need to account for that properly. So this can come back. This is all tabbed in a bit. Um, a bit too much I think is it oh no 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 that's fine that's correct so that's a correct bootloader configuration for current stuff if we save that what's this moaning about what are you complaining about that shell check telling me some things are right um Okay, is there an if up here that I haven't opened? That's in fact exactly what it is. That's the tray as a trailing if statement closure that doesn't exist. So let's save that there. There we go. Okay, so that should be an accurate bootloader config. And I think I need to go and look at all of this kernel juggling that I did which I think I moved to the um, the cleanup step so I think I'll just go and take a look at that uh, none of this we need this is all Ubuntu Mate specific and it's um, all the OEM stuff I may pinch this we may need that for when we get into GPIO stuff with some of these cases so that might be something we need to uh, we need to take a look at uh, ads are disabled for oh did ads just run bother I wanted to try and click the suspend these adverts for a little bit that's annoying um, right okay so here is the cleanup piece and this is everything to do with the kernel stuff so let's add all of this in Head of the rest of the system cleaner. But let's just grab all of this, all of that, all of that, with the exception of those lines. Copy that. And if we look at the existing cleanup script here, that's what it looked like. It does do similar things. Okay, this I think we can now drop that directly in there and this should have all of my kernel wrangling going on old kernel old kernel short name new kernel so that should be everything so now up here i can yank out all of the bits to do with um all of this stuff don't need to do that there uh, in fact, all of that is effectively a similar bit of code, but in a different part of the script. So none of that's required now. Okay. So, apt install those things. I should probably move this into a new stage, but we'll keep it for the moment. So let's go and find out what the current version of Ludo is. Um, according to this, it's 0.16.9. So things have moved on quite considerably since uh, the last time I experimented. So that should deposit, um, they still named the same things. 
So for whatever reason, I I think we'll grab the deb files this time. I think we'll grab the deb files. Ah, that'll be why. Okay. So it looks like Ludo only produces binaries for ARM HF and uh, Intel 64-bit, which explains why I was only building ARM HF binaries before. Okay, well, well, we'll follow that. Maybe we should install the dev. I need to think about how I handle auto updates. We may need to stand up a PPA at some point and bind that and then upload these into the PPA. For the time being though, we'll go with what we had. Because I, I think Ludo has an auto update mechanism actually for itself, which will be fine because if we enable auto unattended updates in the OS for Ubuntu itself, that will keep the OS security patched and then this will keep the app up to date. So that should work. Um, right then. <laughs> Life goals. Right then. Okay. So let's just check that that is going to be the same sort of path format as before. So if we plonk that in there and do a replacement, that's the version number. Yes, they've still got consistent consistent naming. So there we go. Um, so what else do I need to account for up here? Uh, I'm just going to check this um, end spawn stuff because I did make some changes to that, but I can't remember what they were. So um, let's just grab that whole bunch of code there. And see what we've got that's similar. Okay, that's the same, the same, the same. Binding firmware should be the same. It is the resolve.com resolve off. That's identical. We don't need don't need the new stuff. We've got got an equivalent thing on there already. So somewhere in here, uh, control F R sync. Okay, so where's this piece? This is in the image creation. I s oh, that's the unpack piece. Okay. And then this is the image creation when we drop it all back in place again. <laughs> that's for when I tell you that my password is test, by the way. <laughs> right then. Um, so Takoff says, please prove me wrong. But even if I change the VRAM in QuickMU, it won't affect the graphics performance as it's rendered by our GPU. Um, not all of the... Um, graph, uh, the, the GPU drivers in QuickMU actually support video RAM as an option. So I think VGA does, which is, you know, actually emulates old VGA cards. But by default, we use um, QXL um, and other ones, and they don't actually take a VRAM configuration option because it allocates RAM appropriately to what it needs to do. So it only, 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 um, only affects like VGA and a couple of the others which are actually fallbacks for old versions of Mac OS so rarely do you hit that path hello Nowell Nowell is that how we pronounce that um want to become famous oh, no I don't think so we'll get rid of that thank you very much um How do I do that? I did. I need to get more familiar with these tools. One moment. Right, they're banned.
Right, hang on a minute. Why is that? I don't know what what all that is about now. Right then. <laughs> You're going to need mods. I do have some, uh, but yeah, I uh, I I need to to grow the list of. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, I need to grow the list of moderators for sure. So um, let's have a look here. We'll just re-enable the compression piece. Because uh, I think that's worth keeping. Um, okay. Uh, and then we, we added this stuff down here and we know that we're not going to be using that at the moment so we'll just um, we'll just drop this out of the code entirely and we've got that should be gone yeah I need to go through and shell check all of this as well because this is a this is an older thing and all that needs like you know double quoting and what have you as a bunch of I'll do some cleanup another time. Okay, I think that is the basics of it. Um. In fact, because we know we're only going to be building um, arm HF, we can drop that. And we can drop this. Because we know we're never going to encounter that condition. Um, okay. I think, I think that is probably... <clears throat> up to date um, and we'll just change this to do that so there's our thing I think that is the beginnings of what we need so the thing is does it actually work <laughs> so let's think about this let's just um, we need to run up um, terminal. Uh, we need to make the font bigger and we'll just very quickly, very quickly do a, an image build with this inside the VM builder that we created the other day, or the, the image builder we created the other day. So this is going to use the same um, builder as we used for Ubuntu Mate. <clears throat> Uh, I've if I just do that, I think I've already done my updates this morning and got the version of Quick MU that we made last night. So we can just run Quick MU VM Pi Builder, and that's going to boot off screen. I'll just have to drag that down. Here it comes. So this is our um. Uh, Ubuntu Mate based, um, the password is test by the way, our Ubuntu Mate based um, VM which we use for building these images and what we'll do now is uh, we'll go to um, I need to bookmark this, is it 10.0.2.4 that is that where it is connect yes so we'll just bookmark that um add a bookmark there it is and we'll rename that and we'll call that um post So what we'll do then is drop off onto uh, the local machine. 
we'll um, go back to code very quickly. We'll do a very quick janky CP. Um, what's the script name? That to the public directory. Head back to our virtual machine where we'll now refresh. We can pick that script up and we'll drop that in here. We'll open a terminal in here. So we're on the VM now <clears throat> and we should have our ArmHF server image here. So we'll just make that Ubuntu Retro Remix executable. We need to run that as root. Um, no, dot slash. And I think that's the flag and we want that image. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, no, in fact, it's not that one. It'll be the one, the unpacked version above is what we want. So let's see what happens. The password is test. Ah, okay, we need to give it a remix as well. So let's just say, let's just say Raspi, which is you know, the generic. Okay, then. There we go. So this should be our start of a 10. And if this builds an image, we'll we it may even build quite quickly we'll just have to see how we go so um takoff says by the way uh i was able to stick together a building environment in docker for my kobo reader ah nice 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 work so from now on i'm able to write small application from my old kobo um ebook reader uh, just has just have to learn golang yeah i'm by no means a go um aficionado i as with most languages i i, I i've learned enough to be dangerous <laughs> right then so uh this is looking good so far it looks like it's going to do the right thing so this is the first stage here is uh, throwing out all of the server related stuff I don't think we require <coughs> um, uh, and doing updates and what have you to make sure we've got the latest stuff inside the, uh, the image. Um, what have I done to my chat window here? Why, why is that stuck with this thing? Uh, why, why can't I get rid of that now? Uh, anyone that's interested in helping out um, as a mod in um, Twitch, uh, let me know in Discord if you're interested. I'm more than happy to um, bring people up um, to help with that stuff. That would be very much appreciated. There's enough going on um, as it is already. Uh, this message is entirely ordinary because of the way that the images are being constructed inside a uh, container at the moment. Right, okay, I think I think that's looking pretty good. Even if that's not quite the finished article, I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at... Um, I ha I ha oh, I haven't got Git Kraken running. Okay, we'll, um, we'll start Git Kraken up then. Uh, and we'll bring that into the same project. So what are we doing here? Um, we're going to open uh, an existing repo. We'll pick up the retro remix. And let's just take a look at our changes. So we're 
doing that, we've moved all of this kernel stuff around. So maybe I should stage that one and that one. And then Well, that's frustrating that I have to do all of this um, piecemeal, but here we go. Let's try and keep these commits. Oh, there we go. Now it's going to give me the hunk option. That's perfect. So that should be um, handle kernel upgrades during image builds. Okay. So we'll now say stage all of that as um, remove seeded snaps is what that does. That is the only bit that's in there. Yes, it is. Good, good. Uh, and then what was this? So that was all retro arch stuff. As was that, as was that. So I think what we'll do is stage that. Uh, this is all fine. And stage that. Okay, so if we look at this, this should all be the removal of retro arch. So that's removing RetroArch from the build. And this is going to be, uh, am I missing something? Have I not saved my script? Um, okay. Seems fine. So this is all uh, the new configuration. So that is going to be stage that. And I think there may be something in there we want to drop, which is those lines. So that is going to be um, Update bootloader configuration. Oop. Take that one in. So, uh, hey, hey, Vincey, how you doing? So I did the switch with Linux. Oh, did you now? Did you do that in a VM or did you uh, did you uh, use a spare machine or a separate? hard drive congratulations either way <laughs> welcome uh running uh you're running into problems okay what have you bounced into so far okay we'll stage that and we'll say um add um image compression What have we got left here? Stage that. We'll um, use twenty one ten or newer. I should probably put some guardrails on that as well to prevent building on earlier versions. And what have we got here? Just um, stage that as more cleaning 
Oh no, let's do um, up, upgrade in the cleanup. And this is going to be our white space. So I've started adding training new lines. Let's have a look. So you're dual booting. Okay, very good. Um, but whenever I switch to 144 hertz on my dual screen monitor, one monitor turns half of the screen to black. But it's okay to stay with 60 hertz. So which distro are you using? Which distro and desktop are you using, uh, Vincy? I'm I'm not asking that out of uh, as a casual inquiry. That will help uh, uh, me answer your question. I think. <clears throat> so you're using Ubuntu. So actual Ubuntu. What version of Ubuntu did you install? Oh gosh, is that still going? Hopefully, this is the update step. This is the update step, I think, running here at the moment. So 2004. Okay, so it's 2004, then that's X11. Okay, as Takoff um, says, I think, uh, as well. Broken my built in chat here, sorry. Um, so if you're running Ubuntu 2004, that means you're using the display server you're using is X11, also known as Xorg or Zorg, same thing, as opposed to Wayland, which is the sort of newer display server that's enabled in newer versions of Ubuntu. And I think one of the limitations of Xorg is you can't run... Um, your, your refresh rate will be capped to whatever the lowest refresh rate of all of your connected monitors are. I think I'm right in saying that about X11. So the fact that you have a high refresh rate monitor, but a 60 hertz monitor, I think all of the refreshes will be capped to 60 hertz. Um, and, the, and if you're trying to force one higher, that could be why one of them is not displaying correctly. Um, which is probably disappointing for you to hear. And if you, uh, yeah, so because you've got a high refresh, a mixture of different refresh rates, uh, 2110 was just released a couple of weeks ago. And that uses Wayland by default in Ubuntu, and you'll probably have a better experience with your um, with your screens. Now, you can upgrade from 2004 to 2110, but that actually requires bouncing through several release upgrades because you need to upgrade to 2110, then 2104, then 2110. So that's quite a lot of, you know upgrade steps so depending you can choose to do that or if you haven't set up much on your ubuntu you could do a you know a clean install over the top of what you've got sorry to be the bearer of disappointing news okay this is doing stuff so here's here's ludo uh getting extracted onto the system so that's good uh and here is uh, all of the snaps being yanked out so that bit of the script is working too. Uh, here's my... Oh, hang on, what on earth is this? Oh, that's bad. Oh, 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 oh man, look at that. That's going to that's gonna break things big style. Look at that. Somehow I've managed to install a generic kernel. Oh, gosh. How on earth did I do that? Bad Martin. Oh well, that's that's going to be completely busted. Um. Okay. So can you see here? Somehow it's picked up, and not even. Yes, indeed. <laughs> A well placed oops, indeed, Paul. <laughs> um. 
Okay, so Vince, Vincey says it's fine. Uh, I installed it yesterday and I'm trying to configure it now. Okay, yeah, in which case, and so 2110, so you pick, you pick 2004 because it's an LTS. That's a smart move. 2110 is an interim release, but the next release of Ubuntu will be 2204, which will be an LTS. So you can, you know, use this 2110 version and then do an upgrade from 2110 to 2204, and then you can ride that LTS, you know, for a, a good long time. Um, so I, I think that's probably the better, the better option. How on earth did I make such a calamitous error? So let's go, let's go and find out what on earth happened there. Because clearly I did a bad. Um, um, it must be in... Ah! That's how copying code over and not paying attention. That will be part of the problem there. So old kernel, old kernel, new kernel. So let's save that. And if I copy the cleanup step over, oh no, because this always builds inside the same thing. Okay, I wonder if this will work. It might do actually. So let's um, go to terminal. That's the wrong one. Which terminal do I want to be in? This one? No, I uh, know it's in the uh, code, wasn't it? Here we go. We do that. <laughs> go back to our VM, which is here. And then in our VM, we'll go and pick up the image maker thingy, copy, paste that in here. And go back to here. We just edit that. Um, We could run the whole thing, or we could cheat. We could do this, because I think all of that's going to be fine. We run it from that step onwards. Let's see what we get. Uh, oh. Okay, let's see what this does. See if this actually... Hello, Adam. How are you? Is it late or early for you? Um, uh, also... Yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, let's have a look here. Yeah, the thing is, yeah, I mean, Takov, you're you're handling that conversation there. It's fair enough. But I think if you've got a mixture of refresh rate monitors, the Wayland is the only only option. Oh, that's doing the compressing stage already. Did that sort out the kernel mismatch? Uh, there we go. There we go. Here it is. So old and new, those are now the correct way round. <coughs> so it has removed the old version and that's a perfect, that's perfectly fine for that error message to exist. That isn't always going to trigger. And now it's copied the correct Raspberry Pi kernel into the appropriate place. So that has in fact um, unbroken the big fat mess. So I think what was happening there is that was peeking inside my host. No, I'm really not sure where that kernel, anyway, this is doing the right thing now. 
So we have a um, an image built. <clears throat> so let's um, let's pick that up. We have the remix. That's remarkably small. Copy that and drop that in here. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, so. Um, yeah, Linux Paul, I'm copying stuff around a bit carefree. Uh, <laughs> it's my own stuff off the internet, however. <clears throat> if 2004 has HWE, would that have recent enough graphics stack? So it has a recent enough graphics stack, but it doesn't use Wayland by default. I mean, technically, uh, you could use... That's a good point, actually, King Egypt. So, Vinci, it is possible to enable Wayland in 2004... Um, uh, and use that as an alternate shell. For those of you that are running Ubuntu 20.04, is that on by default? I can't remember if it is or if you need to install the package to enable it. <clears throat> but that's actually a good point. You could save yourself, save yourself some time and test Wayland on 20.04 because that is something that you could do. <clears throat> so... Um, it's early for Adam, they're just starting their day. Um, <clears throat> yeah, oh, let's allow that. <laughs> right then. Um, so, I just saw Charifu said you wouldn't have these tab file name problems if you'd use the call. What do you mean tab file name problems? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, the reason it was refusing to tap complete is because it wasn't an executable thing and I, I was trying to run it. Um, yeah, yes, HWE is enabled by default in a uh, proper Ubuntu. It, it will automatically step up. You're going to install 2110. Yeah, I think that's wise. If you've got decent hardware, then there's, there's a bunch of other benefits for doing that as well. <clears throat> And more so if you're like learning and experimenting. Um, right then, so we've got that copied over, I believe. Um, yeah, so does fish. <laughs> fish, fish does exactly the same thing. Um, right then, uh, what are we up to? We're now going to stick that on on an image I suppose, on a on a device so actually I don't need to do that I can just get this so uh, ooh, buttons buttons work okay so I've got my SD card here and I plugged in my card reader on this dangly dongly thing uh, to make it a bit easier to work with um, oh, honestly this is just like USB put it in the wrong way put it in the wrong way again and then put it in the right way. So there we go. There's there's an image there. <clears throat> oh, actually, if I, I've copied that over, haven't I? So if we just go and look in the public folder, we should find there's our retro remix. And if we open that with the image writer, did that appear on the right screen? It's always hard to know. I think. Ah. Uh, back here sorry I'm doing this is where my virtual monitor situation gets a bit confusing so we the I just right clicked on the thing and said open it with the disk writer so we're going to write this on um, the SD card that we just plugged in start that restoring and that's the wrong password because on this machine my password is not test done and I know you're shocked to learn that but uh, it is true right then so up here we've now got this running um, so that's now putting that image on the SD card and then we'll give it a try and see if it works so I'll just get some some extra keyboards in place um, 
So I've got a second keyboard and mouse for the Pi. So I just turned all that gubbins on. So if we just switch to the overhead view. So this, this keyboard and this mouse are connected to uh, wireless um, dongles, which are plugged into that Raspberry Pi and we'll use that to, to test things. And let's just switch here whilst that image copy is running. So, uh, so yeah, I'm running, I run the fish shell, um, Charifu, it's uh, Charifau. Is that how I pronounce that, by the way? Um, so, um, Takoff says, have you, cons have you considering not using the SD card, but network boot with your PC and ethernet cable? Uh, no, <laughs> I haven't considered that. What I will do is I'll probably switch over to using um, testing with USB boot and stuff like that in a bit. Not now, today, but in the in the future. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's all stuff to experiment with in the future. Um, and then Vinci asks, is it possible to install Ubuntu along with Windows on my SSD? but use the same uh, hard disk for storage. Yes, it is. If you um, install, ah, there's a slightly long answer to this. If you've got, um, if Windows is encrypted using BitKeeper, which I believe is the default behavior now, you first have to decrypt the Windows partition. Once you've done that, you can do a side-by-side -side install of Ubuntu and Ubuntu will resize the partitions to make space to be in for Ubuntu to be installed alongside Ubuntu, but that whole um, that whole uh, process of you know decrypting BitLocker is a bit of a faff. Um, Charifu, is it GIF or GIF? It's GIF. <laughs> um, and somebody asks, "Is that my room? This is my my lodge." Yes. So let's just see how uh, how that image is going. Ah, right, we're done. Okay. Uh, now I've got two mice. I'm always going to reach for the wrong one. So we'll just eject that. And close that. And right, that card can come out of here. So if we just go to the overhead camera and quickly turn off the chat. So we're just going to chuck this in here. Um, and we're going to hope for the best. So we now turn the chat back on. Hello again. And then go to the capture view. So first of all, I'll add power. So, and then I've got a switch on the back of the Pi. So we'll turn this on and we'll see what happens. So the Pi is starting up. And this is either going to be a glorious success. Well, that's the start. That's boots, bootloaders come up. Let's see see what happens <clears throat> um, I see a blinking cursor just there which tells me something's happening the keyboard just flashed okay so that's the file system being resized oh that's oh okay okay that's the uh, not pretty boot splash uh, who was it that wanted to work on that Cody there it is that's what you get so far <clears throat> Um, so it's bringing up the system and hopefully we'll see the display manager. In fact, we, we may not even see it. It should take us straight through to running. Okay. So it didn't take us straight through. Okay. So I'm going to put in what I think is the password. <laughs> is it blank? I don't know what the password is. <laughs> uh. Well, there we go. So using Cloudinit, I now need to figure out how I um, set the password in some fashion, because clearly it's not either of the things I was expecting it to be. Um, let's try it with...
No. Um, I'm just trying a bunch of possible options. <coughs> no, there we go. So we uh, we're at that. This is this is where we've got to. So if if we knew how to log into this thing. <laughs> I wonder if I could put, uh, oh, I could cheat and put a guest session in here, I suppose. Um, so this is what we have. Um, I wonder if I can do, um, gosh, this is a real faff on this keyboard. Control Alt Function. Can I drop to a terminal console? No, apparently not. So that's where we've got to. I think that's okay. In, in as much as that's just figuring out what the default password is. Um, and um, I feel like that's that's an all right place to be. So I'm just gonna click a button over here because this is telling me it wants to run an advert in a little bit and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna snooze things. So, that will prevent you from seeing more adverts, which is a good thing, I reckon. And what will... Uh, typing on the right keyboard. This is the problem with two keyboards. You always type on the wrong one now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to park that there. And we'll um, come back to this maybe tomorrow morning. And we'll step things forward. We'll fix those cloudy knit issues. Get the thing uh, booting up. Um, and being able to log in and hopefully get Ludo functioning and then um, and then from there we can start like actually creating all of the integrations to get some stuff going and I can see you saying it that we need some nice animations um, uh, pull requests welcome <laughs> definitely um, <clears throat> the rest is trivial hard problems are solved I think that's where we are I think at this point it's creating a functioning OS I think we've done that bit. I saw all of the important stuff working, figuring out like default usernames and passwords. That's pretty trivial, I think. We'll we'll fix that uh, in short order, and we'll we'll get into that next time, and then we can actually start like dragging out some of these consoles and controllers, and actually getting stuff going, which will be a lot more uh, enjoyable. So uh, let's have a look. Who's who's making interesting stuff? on Twitch today. So I'm just looking through some people uh, who are doing things. Oh, it's toggle bit again. Been there a few times. Let's see if we can find... Ah, well that sounds... Oh, it's not English. Okay, I've made that mistake before. <clears throat> oh. Okay making it there's lots of game developers lots of game developers doing stuff uh there's my fat face doing something oh man has anyone got any suggestions i can't actually find anyone <clears throat> nice one vincey good luck with that um i see you joined our discord so if you've got questions <clears throat> you know feel free to ask in there there are pl plenty of people that will be, be able to hopefully answer your inquiries Making, uh, okay. Um, I'm struggling to find inspiration, but this looks interesting. Let's, uh, what if there was a phone? Shush, mute. <clears throat> oh, no, that won't do, it's the wrong language. Well, I think as I'm, I know, I know, we'll go somewhere where we've been before. So let's go, let's go back here. So we'll go with uh, tried and tested. Uh, we'll drop by. Okay. We're going to go and drop into uh, toggle bit. Okay then. So thank you all for coming, everyone. Um, uh, ideas and suggestions how we can improve this project in particular making it look fancy for sure um, <clears throat> I may um, get in touch with Luke and see if he can make us a nice uh, a nice logo and seeing as though he did such a good job with uh, quick MU right um, thank you for stopping by 
Uh, I'll speak to you tomorrow and hopefully we'll actually get a functioning uh, console up and running. Here we go then. Bye for now. Oh, I need to hit that button first. <laughs> see, you, see you soon.